It's been almost a month since I arrived in Botswana and so far it's been really great. It's always exciting to be in a new country again and Tiana and me have been exploring as much as we can. I wanted to share some of our experience here I thought to try out something new by making a video log. Hope you all enjoy it! I left home at the beginning of February and flew from the Netherlands to Botswana with a stop in Qatar in South Africa. I had nice views from the window as we flew over the Middle East and Africa. Air traffic has shrunk a lot since the start of the pandemic, and although it wasn't as bad as last year, my flights were still only half full. The airport at Johannesburg was deserted as well. Upon arrival at the airport in Botswana, I had to undergo another COVID test. They really take the pandemic serious here, and I'll tell you more about the COVID situation here later on. Tiana had already been here for a month, and welcomed me into our new home. Her school arranged a very nice apartment for us, which was mostly furnished. It's really quite big, much bigger than the place they used to live in Japan. The apartment complex is on a compound, including guards and walls, so we really feel like the stereotypical expats. It's a very nice place though, with lots of green plants and birds around. There's a playground and even a swimming pool. We've been using it a lot since it's really quite warm at the moment. During my first days and weeks, I've been exploring our neighborhood and the different parts of Cabarona. The city, which is the capital of Botswana, is quite big, counting about 230,000 people. The infrastructure and roads are in good order, although everything is very much made for cars, and getting around on foot has proven a bit tricky. You'll find small unpaved roads in between the neighborhoods though, which is a nice respite from the busy roads. There are small parks at many places throughout the city as well, although not all of them are maintained as well. You won't see many other people choosing to walk from A to B though. The car is really the preferred mode of transport. Not only because it's practical, but also since it's seen as a type of status symbol. As a result, more and more of Gaborone's people are driving, leading to very full roads and long traffic jams. With this many cars around, accidents are bound to happen, of course. We've already witnessed one or two small collisions when we were walking by. Despite all of this, roads are generally safe, and many of them even have assigned cycling lanes. So of course, I set out right away to find a bicycle for myself. But this turned out to be a bit harder than I thought. Despite the good infrastructure and the flat landscape, Cycling is seen as a bit of a low status thing for people who cannot afford a car. The only bicycles that are sold are these super high-end bikes for off-road cycling that have cost thousands of euros. After almost a month of looking around town, I finally found a second-hand bicycle dealer. It's a South African man who imports old donated bicycles from the United States and resells them here. This place is quite unorganized but he found me a nice bike in the end. Equipped with my new bike, I've been exploring the different parts of Gaborone. The neighborhood we live in seems to be the area where a lot of rich people live, since it's filled with many fancy looking houses. Some of them are real mansions of absurd size. You'll notice that every house has big walls around their premises, making them almost look like prisons. This must be for security, although from my impressions, Cabarona seems to be a relatively safe city. In the other parts of the city, you'll find more common neighborhoods with normal size houses. Electricity, water and sewerage are a given, and the government upholds very high standards for houses and buildings. Therefore, most buildings look really decent, and there are no real slums or poor areas in the city. This was so different from what I experienced in Madagascar last year, where living standards are a lot worse. Yeah. Botswana and the city of Gamaroni are really very developed and modern, which came as a slight surprise to me. There are many big western-like shopping malls that sell everything you can think of. 
Supermarkets are large and well equipped and sell all of the big brands. Luckily there are also some more authentic marketplaces and smaller shops throughout the city, which are much more fun to visit than those big malls. You will often see small roadside shops that sell snacks or offer services. I got a haircut in one of those, which cost me a stunning amount of 2 euros. Wooden furniture businesses also seem to thrive, and you'll see many small stalls that build all kind of cool stuff from reused wood. We bought a set of chairs for our apartment at one of them. You might have noticed in the videos that everybody wears face masks all the time. This is a mandatory rule for the COVID prevention. The pandemic is taken very seriously here, and Botswana has taken up a proactive stance since the beginning. The country seemed to have handled the pandemic quite well, and the relative numbers of cases and deaths are low compared to Europe, the Americas, or even their neighbor South Africa. There are quite strict rules, and for the most part people seem to follow them. A face mask is mandatory to wear at all times when outside. Shops and restaurants are open, but your temperature and personal details are taken before you enter. Testing areas are widely available and testing happens fast. There's a curfew at night and for a few months the sale of alcohol was stopped to minimize the number of social gatherings. Last week the ban was lifted again. Shops were sold out quite fast. The weather here has been really great. Botswana lies in the southern hemisphere, which means it's currently the end of summer. So lots of sunny, cloudless days, quite high temperatures. This time of the year is also the rainy season. We've had lots of downpour in February. Botswana is generally a very dry country. Some years it doesn't rain at all. This amount of rain is therefore really exceptional. The infrastructure in the city isn't equipped for so much rain all at once. So roads and fields sometimes flood. The drainage system overflows. The rain brings forth all kinds of life as well, which is really nice to see. Many of the people we've met in Gaborone say they've never seen the city this green. There are interesting types of plants, trees and flowers that I've never seen before. And it's not just the flora. All sorts of insects seem to thrive as well. For such a big urban area, it's surprising to see so much wildlife around. Lizards and geckos especially. These giant mounds of sands here are termite hills. Some of them are really enormous. Botswana is apparently a bird's paradise with nearly 600 species of birds. Even in Gaborone you can spot many different colorful birds. The weaver birds are especially cool. They build these little enclosed nests high up in the trees. And of course, there's always plenty of cows, goats, horses and chicken around the city, usually just hanging out by the side of the road. Alright, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it gave you a bit of an impression of Botswana and Gaborone. I'll try to make this a regular thing and make some more videos on different topics involving our adventures in Botswana. Thanks for watching!